Hi, um, I'm Deb. And I'm Lizzie. And we're here to talk about the fallacy of AI functionality. As you've probably heard probably dozens of times by now, uh, machine learning has increasingly been applied to problems in domains such as healthcare, education, law enforcement, finance, and more. Yet, despite the current public fervor over AI's great potential, many deployed algorithmic products simply do not work. They misdiagnose patients, accuse the innocent, and fumble hiring decisions. Their gatekeeping resources from loans to housing to healthcare away from those who clearly need it the most. So what we end up having is a real world implementation of this meme where we're so worried about all the ways in which AI can hurt people and take over the world. When in reality, the systems don't necessarily work um, as expected in any way, shape or form adjusting sort of our need to recalibrate our, our concerns in addition to our expectations based off of the reality of how these systems work. And what we've called this is the functionality assumption, which is really prevalent in not just the way people promote AI, but also in the way that they critique and police AI systems, regulate AI systems as well. Um, so for example, um, uh, we have the New York City bill um, in order to conduct bias audits of AI type HR technology. And this bill speaks very specifically um, to that technology and to and highlights fairness and bias concerns um, as a need to audit these systems. However, in reality, and this sort of follows from concerns raised by academics about the bias in these algorithmic hiring tools. However, um, when you look at the actual deployment of these systems, a lot of the personality tests and facial recognition tools used to gauge hireability are a step above pseudoscience and don't actually have very thorough validation processes, revealing that before even having concerns around fairness or bias, we should be really investigating and vetting the functionality of these tools. So to challenge the functionality assumption and demonstrate the various ways in which AI can break, we developed a taxonomy of known AI failures. These categories capture different notions of what it means for something to not work. And to do this, we partly relied on the AI algorithmic and automation incident and controversy repository spreadsheet, which is crowdsourced from some professionals. And out of this databases of over 800 cases, we narrowed our analysis to 283 in which the technology involved uh, claimed to be AI, ML, or data-driven, um, and where the harm reported was due to a failure of the technology itself. So uh, one category we came up with was that of impossible tasks. And so this is when a system is not just broken in the sense that it needs to be fixed, but when there's evidence that there's no version of the technology developed for that task uh, that can be developed reliably. So um, in these cases, a functionality centered critique can be made with respect to the task itself, more generally, instead of with respect to a particular tool. Um, so some tasks are conceptually impossible, such as predicting criminality from someone's face. This is, has been scientifically debunked, uh, but other tasks are impossible for more practical reasons. So healthcare data is often formatted inappropriately and difficult to share or acquire legally, making many healthcare related tasks uh, impossible in practice. And uh, predictive policing related tasks are also often impossible. So the data used to predict crime is inherently limited, uh, we can only observe arrests and other biased sources. Um, engineering failures are failures in AI systems that can be traced to specific engineering decisions in the development process of the system. Sometimes this can be due to a fundamentally specified objective, such as in the case of an algorithm designed to catch international students cheating on an English language test in the UK. The Home Office began a campaign to cancel the visas of anyone who had cheated using voice recognition technology, which classified a majority of the tests as invalid. Audits showed the text error rate could be as high as 30%, yet thousands of people were forcibly removed from the country. This system, deployed despite a ridiculously high false positive rate, was not designed to protect the falsely accused. Well, even if a model was conceptualized in a reasonable way, some component of the system downstream can also be executed badly, lazily, or wrong. So in 2011, the state of Idaho attempted to build an algorithm to set Medicaid assistance limits for individuals with developmental and intellectual disabilities, but they trained this 
model on highly unreliable data. Two thirds of it had to be thrown out because of data entry errors and individuals reported drastic cuts to their benefits. Sometimes despite attempts to anticipate failure modes during the design phase, a model doesn't fail until it is exposed to external factors and dynamics that, uh, that arise after it is deployed. And even if an external actor or user is not deliberately trying to break a model, their actions may induce failure if they interact in that model in a way that was not planned for by the model's designers. So in 2019, the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department it used non-suitable probe images in almost half of all of the facial recognition queries it sent through a vendor developed system. This means the quality of the matches were worse than whatever the vendor of the system reported before deployment. Finally, uh, miscommunications or outright lies can be told about performance, functional safety, or other aspects of deployed AI systems. For instance, investors poured money into Scale Factor, a startup that claimed to sell AI that could replace accountants for small businesses. But the tagline, because evenings are for families, not for finance. Under the hood, however, most of the work was done manually by humans in Austin and the Philippines. Some customers say they received books filled with errors and were forced to rehire accountants or clean up the mess themselves. So as we can see from earlier, a lot of the failures and the headlines that we read about these failures um, can actually be more appropriately categorized as fitting into this taxonomy as a different type of failure, um, but all revealing or all leading to the conclusion that these systems fall short of our expectations for these tools once deployed in the real world and affecting real people. And this is not necessarily something that's unique to the AI industry in any way, shape, or form. Um, we've seen similar patterns of these issues occur in related industries, especially in medicine, um, in food safety, and also in vehicle safety, where these are industries that were rife with products that did not live up to expectations in any way, shape, or, shape, or form before um, very drastic reforms led to uh, shifts in that industry and more accountability for those selling these products. So we actually already have, as a result of those other industries, uh, some tools that we can begin to leverage in the AI space to protect those that are impacted from the deployment, the mass deployment of these dysfunctional tools. So for example, in the legal world, we have the notion of uh, consumer protection and laws to protect those that might be harmed by the deployment of a system that doesn't function as expected in ways that can be harmful. Uh, under tort law, we have product liability, and we also have this notion of warranties um, that protect individuals against certain notions of, of uh, products not being vetted appropriately or tested appropriately prior to deployment. Um, and finally, we have this notion of fraud that protects us against uh, false and de deceptive claims. On the organizational front, um, there's a history of internal audits being effective tools for internal accountability and particularly documentation, um, accounting for or recording engineering decisions that can lead to dysfunctional products or outputs. And then we also have this notion of product certification and standards, um, especially at the industry level or the um, uh, the the sort of corporate organizational level um, where they can actually, we can actually as a community or as a uh, uh, as a government uh, or with the government set expectations, formalize expectations for these systems and deployment and actually uh, measure the difference or discrepancy between how these systems perform versus how we expect them to. And I think the motivation behind this work or one of the main points we're trying to make is that simply failing to live up to expectations um, is enough for these systems to cause real harm to real people. Um, the reason that we are invested in this question is because just simply having a dysfunctional product out there on the market um, can cause serious harm. So here's a couple headlines, recent headlines actually, um, detailing all the different individual lives that are negatively affected by these systems once they fail um, to deliver on their promise and are still widely deployed regardless. And you know, these are not just headlines, but these are actual individuals. Um, they're faces of real people with real families. Um, and there's a lot at stake in terms of making sure that we can protect these people from the mass deployment of these systems that are, don't actually live up to their declared purpose. 
Um, and as these systems proliferate in the real world without proper vetting for functionality, we see more and more of these cases of individuals harmed. Um, and we find that we need to encourage the community to think uh, carefully about how functionality vetting can be a critical aspect of not just um, assessing the, the, the sort of performance of these systems, but really as an integral part or consideration in the, in the, the sort of objective of ethical AI of protecting these people that are most, most at risk. Thank you.